welcome to the Sports Note for Wednesday, January 24th, 2024. And boy, do we have some good games on paper this weekend uh, for the right to go to Super Bowl 58 in Las Vegas in a few weeks here. Uh, in the NFC, we've got the upstart and the ultimate underdog Detroit Lions going on the road uh, to play at the San Francisco 49ers. Uh, you're going to have Jared Goff, a former number one overall pick who basically got shipped out of town in Los Angeles, uh, going up against Mr. Irrelevant Brock Purdy, who we all were kind of wondering what he was going to look like healthy throughout the playoffs last year. Naturally, that didn't happen, resulting in San Francisco's earlier than anticipated exit. Speaking of it earlier than anticipated exits, you go over on the AFC side, you've got Patrick Mahomes, who's now looking for a third Super Bowl title in four years, uh, going up against Lamar Jackson and the Baltimore Ravens. Now, this is Jackson's fifth time in the playoff, uh, fourth time in the playoffs, my, uh, my apologies, um, and he has yet to reach the AFC title game. This is his first opportunity doing so uh, because that was the knock on Jackson for the first few appearances is going out a lot earlier than expected, as, as I mentioned a moment ago. Uh, we remember that they were favored a couple of years ago against Tennessee, got knocked out. That was a huge surprise. Um, and then they were also, remember, that was a very back-and-forth game this past weekend against Houston. And Houston, remember, was kind of playing with house money, uh, who kind of backed their way into the playoffs on the very last day of the regular season uh, and then was in a back-and-forth game with Cleveland um, uh, really through the first one-and-a-half quarters and then just completely took over and blew the Browns out. And then... You know, Baltimore woke up, realized that they were a 13-3 and team and were not going to get skunked by, uh, you know, a team who backed in. And, and Baltimore just opened the floodgates in the second half and completely dominated Houston uh, to where the winner of the Kansas City Buffalo Classic on Sunday night uh, was actually now going to be coming to Ravens Stadium, formerly M&T Bank Stadium. But this is where, if you were... Booking this as, as uh, a boxing match or an MMA fight, this is your main event. This is the one matchup that everyone has really been kind of forecasting to throughout the playoff, really since the playoffs began, even more than, uh, than Goff and Stafford's first-round matchup a couple of weeks ago. Um, but you've got Jackson, who's right now the favorite to win his second MVP here uh, before too long, uh, really when the awards get announced here in the next couple of weeks, going up against Mahomes, who's got two Super Bowl rings and two Super Bowl MVPs on top of it, uh, and then also just beat Josh Allen again in the playoffs. And that's actually where Lamar has to stop thinking ahead and just kind of stay in the moment. Now, I know I've, cr I've been a very, very large critic of Lamar Jackson in the past, and I, I always said that, you know, the book is still out on him. He's a great talent. Don't get me wrong about that. Uh, but he's also the best running back under center in the National Football League. And yes, that is true. Uh, but let's also keep in mind that Jackson did throw for, 30, for over 3,500 yards, 24 touchdowns, seven interceptions this year, uh, did lead the Ravens in rushing this year. He accounted for... Um, for a decent amount, uh, I want to say he accounted for almost 60% of their uh, their overall rushing yards this year. He finished uh, he finished ahead. As, uh, I take that back. He accounted for 30.8% of all Baltimore's rushing yards this year, uh, and he actually finished 11 yards ahead of Gus Edwards for second on the team by the end of the regular season. Also, remember that um, you know. Uh, the Ravens sat just about everybody in the regular season finale against Pittsburgh, a game that they lost, uh, knowing that they had already wrapped up the number one seed in the AFC the week prior. Now, the last time that Jackson lost a game was to the Browns, and it was a game where the Ravens led by 14 going into the fourth quarter, really actually in the first couple of minutes of the fourth quarter. There was a game that they led 24-9 to at the half, 
and then the wheel started to come off and Jackson threw a very, very key interception that was returned for a touchdown uh, midway through that quarter that allowed the Browns to, it could have allowed the Browns to tie the game, but the Browns missed the extra point and then the Ravens were relatively ineffective, only burning about two minutes off the clock after getting the ball back, still again up by one, gave the ball back to the Browns, and the Browns ran the last five minutes out and walked off with a field goal. Um, And again, up until the Pittsburgh game, that was the last time the Ravens had lost a game. And of Baltimore's three losses, two of them were in, in the division to playoff teams, and both of those games were at home. Uh, So let's actually see what happens here. But again, one was very fluky with the Ravens possibly letting their foot off the gas against Cleveland, and then the other one was them sitting just about everybody against Pittsburgh. But if Jackson can win this game, it's going to be something that uh, there's going to be a lot of history involved. As a matter of fact, with a lot of these... um, with a lot of these potential Super Bowl matchups, the four that could be out there, we're going to have history in there in some capacity. Uh, but with Jackson, it's shedding a very, very large boulder, gorilla, whatever you actually, whatever measurement of weight that you want to have, uh, you know, facsimile or, or what have you, um, of being able to beat one of these elite quarterbacks in the playoffs when it mattered. Now, a lot of people are going to say that, you know, uh, Patrick Mahomes is the number one quarterback in football, and they're absolutely right. He doesn't have the MVP, you know, caliber numbers this year that Lamar Jackson does, but he's got the wins when it mattered most. Patrick Mahomes is 0-3 in the regular season against Josh Allen. He's 3-0 in the postseason when it's mattered most, including this past Sunday where Allen's decision-making got the better of him very, very late in that game. Take the missed field goal completely out of the equation here. It was a lot of the, a lot of that was actually set up by Allen's misread to throw underneath to be able to set up a shorter kick or a shorter potential fourth down conversion rather than go for broke and throw to the back of the end zone um, to try and win the game right then and there, uh, knowing the history in the back of his mind as to what happened to them in the playoffs a couple of years ago where the NFL actually had to step in and change a rule. With Jackson, though, if Jackson could beat Mahomes, number one, he's going to He's going to basically surpass Josh Allen for the second-best quarterback in all of football. Uh, If you really sit back and think about it, he's going to punch his first ticket to a Super Bowl. He's also going to let Patrick Mahomes know that, hey, I'm not going anywhere, and I'm coming, and I'm coming quick because regardless of who comes out of the NFC, if Baltimore can win this game against Kansas City, who's, again, going for back-to-back titles in three and four years, Baltimore is going to be the favorite in that game. Uh, if you're talking against Detroit, it could be as much as a double-digit favorite, depending on what Detroit does. You know, if how bad Detroit would beat San Francisco if they got through. If it's against San Francisco, it may actually be maybe a field goal at that particular point. But this is where, um, this is actually where Jackson has to do a little bit of soul searching at that particular point because we've uh, the the other thing about a quarterback with his type of skill set is you know that he's very very dangerous through the air but he's even more dangerous when he runs but if you had the option you would much rather him try to beat you with his arm than beat you with his legs which is we've actually seen over the last few years the evolution of the position but we've never seen really a true run-first option type quarterback win the big one. Mahomes is mobile. Mahomes can take off. Mahomes can actually get a bunch of yards on the ground if he wanted to. But Mahomes, from earlier in his you know career, and and can't believe I'm saying that because this is his sixth year in the league and he's played in a conference championship game every single one of these years. Um, but Mahomes is settled himself into a pocket passer who has to run when he needs to. The 
Ravens have kind of tailored this offense to let Lamar basically do whatever he wants, and whether that be, um, you know, schoolyard run all over the place and try and make plays and extend plays. That's one thing. If he wants to be, a, if he wants to stay in the pocket, uh, you know, against a team putting seven, eight guys in the box, so be it. Uh, try to contain them. But he's a very, very versatile quarterback. But we've never seen a guy like, you know, a Randall Cunningham, a Donovan McNabb early in his career, a Mike Vick. We've never seen these real takeoff first, run second, RPO type quarterbacks go out and win the big one. And that's where I think uh, for Jackson's legacy overall, number one, hosting this game, number two, winning this game on Sunday, uh, and and number three, finishing the story, to borrow the line from WWE wrestler Cody Rhodes, uh, in the Super Bowl in three weeks. Uh, that's why it's very, very important for not only his legacy, but also as kind of a jet setter for the next generation of quarterbacks with their athletic skills. Uh, because if you look at the two guys in the NFC, they're certainly more pocket passers than anything because they've got the tools around them to where they don't need to. Baltimore, unfortunately, with their injury history at running back, doesn't really have that luxury. Gus Edwards is not a number one featured back who's going to give you 12, 13, 1400 yards a year like some of these other teams would. Isaiah Pacheco ran rough shot through Buffalo's front seven on Sunday. Uh, Detroit's got Amon St. Brown and all of their weapons. You've got Christian McCaffrey and more weapons than anybody can count in San Francisco right now. So they've all got their weapons. Lamar really doesn't, and yet the Ravens, still with a top-five defense, ended up with the best record in the NFL during the regular season. So let me know what you guys think. What is this game going to say about Jackson. Is this a make or break, not only for deeming this year a success for the Ravens, but does this also, if he cannot get this done on Sunday, is it more a testament towards the greatness of Mahomes in the postseason or Jackson not being able to win the big one with the game on the line? Mike and I will be with you guys on Saturday night for the 2024 YZ Awards, and I will be back with you guys next week. Take care.